In the last video, we were talking about something called a homogeneous equation in the case that we were working on an nth order differential equation. If that right-hand side is not zero, but some other function of t, and we just tend to call that g of t, I've divided through by any potential uh, function that might have been in front of my nth derivative term, right? I've divided through by that. So I've changed all of these to lowercase. I've divided capital G by capital P as well. So I'm calling that lowercase g. So I have an equation in this form where this g of t in the previous video, this g of t was just the constant function zero. But in the event that it's not zero, we call this the non-homogeneous equation. And as with the second order case, uh, we say that y equals some linear combination of the individual solutions, y1 of t, y2 of t, and so on, all the way up to yn of t. That linear combination, right, would be a solution to the homogeneous case, but this is the non-homogeneous case, so we need to add on that particular solution, y of t. Some textbooks, some videos use y sub p of t instead. I've kind of gone back and forth between those. Um, and in fact, I think it's Will who uses some other function, and I can't remember now what it is he uses. Maybe something like f of t or h of t. I don't remember. And, and he makes a good point that it's really easy to confuse y1 of t with yp of t, or capital Y with lowercase y. Right, so he uses some other some other name instead. Um, these are all equivalent. Use whichever one works for you. But I would ar I would argue that Will's point is well taken. Uh, be very careful not to confuse capital P capital Y sorry with lowercase Y or Y sub n or Y sub two with Y sub p or Y sub k or whatever you choose to use. So just be careful with your notation. This is what we call the general solution. This is just like I said in, in, the, in the, um, the second order case, right? This is the solution, the general solution to a non-homogeneous differential equation in this form. And so we have several things we could do. We could take the approach of uh, assume that it has constant coefficients. If it doesn't have constant coefficients, or if we can't determine whether it has constant coefficients, then we can use undetermined coefficients, the method called undetermined coefficients, or the method called variation of parameters. We discussed both of those in the, in, the, in, the, in the second unit. And we also have the tool of reduction of order, which works in some cases that we might, uh, we might tackle as well. We might, we might use that approach as well. And with that, uh, this is really the end of section 4.1. This has been, the, the section is called a general theory of nth order linear differential equations. And it is just that, it's a general theory. It's a general look at what nth order differential equations are, uh, what it means to be a homogeneous equation or a non-homogeneous equation in a, in a case where the order of that equation is higher than two. Um, and in particular, I think the big takeaway from this one really is that idea of linear dependence or independence. Um, it's the same stuff as we did. It's the same idea as we tackled when we talked about second order differential equations, finding the Ron scan and finding that it had to be non-zero. We didn't really talk about the theory behind that or why it was the case. And in this section, we've been able to address that a little bit more closely. Really, at this point, we could just say, well, let's just forget about chapter three, let's just forget about second order differential equations because second order differential equations are just nth order differential equations where n equals two. And so all of those now get absorbed into this new unit and all of the same tools that we've been using apply. So with that, this is the end of this section. In the next section, we're gonna be talking about uh, differential equations, homoge homogeneous differential equations of, uh, of nth order with constant coefficients. And that just takes us back to the same work that we did on differential equations of con with constant coefficients with the second order.
And then in the next section, we look at undetermined coefficients. In the third section, after this one, so in section 4.4, we look at variation of parameters. And that's it for this chapter. Now, this, this unit is made up of more than just this one chapter. There are several parts of a few chapters in this unit. So don't get too excited that this is a super short chapter. Um, but for this chapter, these this section, the, the one we're just finishing now, and these other three uh, make up the, the, the remainder of this chapter. And that is where we're going to go next.